Hello everyone. Uh, the goal of this channel is to give you some uh, tips and tricks on various subjects and topics from, uh, you know, in math, physics, or, uh, or chemistry. So I'm just going to make random videos on whatever I think it's important for students to know. Uh, so today I'm going to start off with uh, all the standard angles and trigonometry. So you know all the uh, six trig functions are there available, right? And then uh, sometimes it's hard for students to uh, uh, memorize all the uh, all the standard angles. So uh, I think uh, it'd be a good idea to have a chart laid down, which is easy to generate whenever you have an exam, or you know, or even while doing homework. So today this uh, is going to be uh, a basic tutorial on um, how to memorize standard trig angles. So as you know, trigonometry has six functions, right? Sine, cosine, tangent cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So, and then the standard angles that I will be working on today are going to be 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. All right? And in terms of radians, that would be 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and power 2 okay so uh, now all you have to do is that you have to memorize this one single row for sine and then once you have those values down you can generate the entire table all by yourself from just one single row so let's get to it the three values out of these five angles are real simple it's just 0 1 and a half okay that's pretty simple so sine of 0 is gonna be 0 okay and then sine of 30 is gonna be half and then the 1 comes to sine of 90 there you go. So three values out of the five standard angles is 0, 1, and half. So that's not that hard to memorize, right? Now the other two values that are here, you know, uh, these two have uh, some commonalities in them. For example, both of these guys are fractions, and both of them also have radicals in them. And the good point is that um, both of them have a common denominator of 2. You know, it's a fraction and they have radicals. So we got the fraction part down. So both of them have the denominator as 2. And then uh, sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2, whereas sine of uh, 60 is square root of 3 over 2. Okay? So now once you have this one uh, uh, set of values memorized, right? And it's pretty easy. Like I told you, it's 0, half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and 1. So once you have these values down, you can have all the other uh, values, you know, in a simple way. I, sh I can show you how. Uh, so, uh, so moving on to cosine now. Um, how do you generate cosine values from these values? You know, all you have to do is just take this one single row, flip it, and then paste it under the, under cosine. So, so all you do is just start from here and then work your way backwards. So cosine of zero is going to be one. Thirty is going to be square root of three over two. Forty-five is going to be square root of two over two. Sixty is going to be half, and then ninety is going to be zero. There you go. Now you have the cosine values for standard angles. Now let's move on to tangent. Now, before we go to tangent, what do we know about tangent? Uh, how can we write tangent in terms of sine and cosine? Well, as you recall, tangent is the same as sine over cosine. So uh, what do you think I, I have to do if I want to find tangent of 0? Well, all I do is I take sine of 0 and then divide it by cosine of 0. So what do I end up getting? So all I do is just 0 divided by 1. I get a 0. And then I do, for, for uh, tangent of 30, I do 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2, and I get 1 over square root of 3. You keep on doing the same thing for every single value. You, this divided by that, well, they're the same thing, so that just gives you 1. And then, now, square root of 3 divided by 2 over 1 half. What does that give you? Well, that gives you square root of 3. If you do the math, right, you, do, you get uh, square root of 3. And then now we're getting here. Now we got sine of uh, 90, which is 1, and then uh, cosine of 90, which is 0. Right? And now if you want to find tangent of 90, we do 1 divided by 0. But as you know, we cannot divide by 0, right? It's like a general rule in math that you, that you cannot have 0 on the bottom. So it's, uh, some people say it does not exist, or some people say infinity. For, here, for now, I think we're just going to go with infinity. Okay? So 1 divided by 0 is going to be infinity. So there you go. From one single row, we've got all uh, the main values that we always use, sine, uh, cosine, and tangent. You know, these are the main functions that we always use. you got the values down for these functions. Now, these aren't that complicated either. Cos cosecant, 
secant and cotangent. They aren't that complicated either. Uh, I'm not going to fill, fill out the whole table for you guys because I think it's good if you do it yourself. But I will tell you how to find it though. Uh, you know how we did uh, tangent in terms of other trig functions? In the same way, we can have cosecant in, uh, in terms of some other trig function. Uh, now, how can we write cosecant in terms of uh, some other trig function? Well, it's going to be this way. Cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine. So what do you think you should do if you want to do cosecant uh, of 0? Well, you just take the sine values and then put them over 1. So 1 over 0, 1 over half, 1 over this, 1 over this, and 1 over that. And then do the same thing, fill it out, and then see what you get. Right? Secant. Secant is going to be the same as 1 over cosine. So do it again for secant. Uh, you can either do 1 over cosine, or you can just reverse the cosecant row and then put it in the secant row just how we did it for cosine. That's as simple as that. And then cotangent is again uh, just how tangent was sine over cosine. Cotangent is going to be cosine over sine. So uh, why don't you fill this table out and then I will show you however what you should end up getting though. And here are the values that I did earlier and you should be getting these values when you do the math. So again for review you just have to memorize the sine row. For cosine, just reverse the sine row. For tangent, just divide sine by cosine. For cosecant, just do 1 over sine. For secant, just do 1 over cosine. And cotangent, either do 1 over tangent, which is the same thing as uh, cosine over sine down here. So I hope that's helpful, and you should be able to generate this table whenever you get a test, and you won't, have, you won't ever have to uh, go through the unit circle. You know, I, I think unit circle is kind of messy. Well, it is good to know, but... I think this is it's the best way if you memorize all these angles and this is the best way to do it. That's how I learned it so I think it's it was helpful for you.